أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده 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 لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يوم تبدل الأرض غير الأرض السماوات وبرزوا لله الواحد القهار صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الحبيب الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي My dear respected elders, my dear brothers in Islam, sisters in Islam, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh it's been a while since our last um, discourse upon the events leading towards the day of Qiyamah. Those who came, was it two weeks or three weeks ago? I think it's been three weeks since our last dars because of the advent of Milad. Milad Sharif, we were holding different um, lessons um, during the first whole page of Rabi on Nur. So inshallah we'll continue. You can remember our last discourse was about the last, the first last of the trumpet. Nafkhatul Ula. There are two blasts. Some reports say that there are three. Reports from where? From the Sunnah? No. Different interpretations among the scholars of the Ahl Sunnah. But the majority, Jumhur al Ulama, the majority of the scholars of the Ahl Sunnah have agreed that there are only two blasts. And between each blast, there is a distance of um, the, the, the length between the length of time between both blasts is the duration of 40 years 40 years in which this entire universe as we know our solar system beyond our solar system everything that can be seen by the naked eye and through the telescope or even further they are all part of the first heaven and there are seven heavens that must be demolished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every single thing. Allah says in Surah Zumar, everything will be ripped asunder. Samawat is in the plural, the heavens. How many heavens do we have? Seven heavens. Every single thing will be in complete annihilation under the wrath and anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his qadr, his decree, his decree, his divine decree. <clears throat> there will only be four people remaining. I remember the dars, there wasn't a quite few people, but we see a, a, a lot more people, alhamdulillah. Let's just have a quick recap of what will happen in accordance to the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad. <coughs> you know, the, the angels at that time. Hmm? فَخَرَّتِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ سَاجِدِينَ لِلَّهِ يَقُولُونَ سُبْحَانَ مَنْ لَهُ الْبَقَى وَحْدَ The angels at that time, when Allah, when the trumpet will be blown, before the trumpet will be blown, the angels will say, Glory be to the one who is remained by himself. Glory be to the one who is left by himself. The only one to, be, to, to have remained is Allah Azza wa Jal Jalla Jalla. So the angels will glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will command the angels to die. He will command Malikul, Malak al maut to take away the souls of the angels. The angels will say to Allah, Ya Allah, نحن لسنا سكان الأرض. We are not inhabitants of the earth. You said, um, you said that everything on top of the surface of the earth will be destroyed, but we are not inhabitants of the earth, we are inhabitants of the sky. And when Allah will reveal, will, 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 will read out his, his words again to the angels, that Allah will say to the angels and remind the angels, And everything in the heavens and the earth will perish. 
everything is in total annihilation except Allah, except His beautiful countenance. له الحكم وإليه ترجعون to him is sovereignty for him belongs all laws وإليه ترجعون and to him belong and to and to him is the return فخرت الملائكة تساجد the angels go down in sajda then the angels say سبحانك الله glory be to you من له البقاء وحده to the one who is the last one to remain the one that who will always remain Everything will perish. All the angels, all the celestial bodies of the universe that we see. Everything. Complete destroyed. Completely destroyed. Illa Malak al Except who? Malak al Jibril, Mika'il, wa Israfil. He will order Malak al to come forward. And he will say, Ya Malak al Man Baqiya, who's left? He would say, Jibril. وميكائيل وإسرافيل وعبدك الآن ما في بين يدي. He will say Jibril is left, Mikael is left, Israfil is left, and this humble servant before you, O oh Allah. Allah ثم يأمر ثم يأمره الله تعالى. Then Allah will command him, اقبض بروح جبريل. Go and seize the soul of Jibril. Go and grab his soul. فيقبضها. You will go and seize the soul of Jibril. Allah will then ask him again, Man baqiya? Who is left? He'll say, Mika'il wa Israfil wa abduka had. Mika'il is left, Israfil is left, and this slave of yours is left. Then Allah will say, Iqbid ruha Mika'il fa yaqbiduha. Go and take the soul of Mika'il. He will seize the soul of Mika'il. And he will come. Man baqiya? Israfil is left. Then he will be ordered to take the soul of Israfil until Malak al Maut. Hazrat Israel, Malak al Maut, the angel of death, who has been ordered by Allah since the beginning of creation to seize the souls of his servants, he is the only one left alive with Allah. He is the only one left now. Then Allah will ask him, Wahua Ya'lam, and Allah knows. He says, Man baqiya, who's left? Malak al Maut will say, It's only me. Then Allah will order Malak al Maut Mud die there and then. He will order Malak al Maut to die as soon as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Mud, the imperative of the verb Mata Yamutu. Mud die, Malak al Maut's ruh will exit his celestial body. He will fall down, he will be struck with death, Malak al Maut. And he will be the first person for ruh to come back. Allah will return his ruh into his nurani body his body of nur and when malak al maut will come back alive again he will say ya allah law kuntu a'lamu anna sakrat al anna sakrat al maut la shadidatun hakaza had i knew had i known that the pangs of death was so severe upon an individual i would have asked you to pardon me from seizing the souls of your servants. Allah Akbar Kabira, a reminder for us all, a dhikra, a reminder for us all. Allahu Akbar. <coughs> then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give back life to Hazrat Israfil. And he will order Hazrat Israfil to blow the trumpet for the second time. And this is our discourse for today, for the next 15, 20 minutes. We find an ayah in Surah Zuma. There are so many ayahs, my dear brothers. I had to go on my phone. I had to take some pictures of the ayahs from my phone because there are so many ayahs from the Quran. So many ayahs from the Quran. So I've got some ayahs from my, from my phone and they are very, very shocking. Some of the ayahs that we hear regarding the Day of Judgment. Especially for those who adopted bad company. We're going to be discussing different tortures and different punishments on the planes of the Day of Judgment itself. Even before the Hisab. Even before the Hisab. Surah Zumar is mentioned in Surah Zumar verse number 68. Then the trumpet will be blown again and behold them standing. Everyone will be standing and waiting 
their eyes gazing upon the skies, gazing upon this new world that Allah has formed. This life, this ayah life is Surah Al-Zumar. The second blow in accordance to what our scholars have said, the second blow is called the blow of resurrection. The blow of giving life. This is the second blow. Every creature that ever existed from the time of creation and all within the span of the entire earth and the heavens, every single creation will come back to life. This includes the ruh, the arwah of the plants. Even plants have ruh. Every single ruh, the plants, the animals, the, the, the little ant that you may have trampled are upon unintentionally or intentionally, God forbid, will be raised back up again. Every single thing. If Allah gave life for humans, Allah brought life into this earth, then is it difficult upon Allah to put life back into their dead bodies? Allah It is not hard. Everything is easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything for Allah is ease upon ease. Allah Akbar Kabir. How about if people, those people who were swallowed by a shark, or they were devoured by a tiger, or those people who were cremated, they were burnt to smithereens, they were burnt to ashes, and their ashes were blown away, even their bodies will reform and they will grow out from the earth like crops. Every single body will grow out from the earth. For those bodies who were lost at sea, or, they, or they, they were swallowed by a whale, or anything, they will grow out from the earth like crops grow. Allah has spoken. People upon the second blow, they will rise out from the earth. And the people will shake off the dirt, clinging, clinging to their faces. You'll be shaking off the dirt. Everyone will be up again for the second life, body and soul together. Just like you are here physically before me, and I am before you all, you will be the same disposition on the day of Qiyamah after the second life. This is your second life. The life of eternity. The life of eternity. They will, all the dead will, will immediately realize the situation. There are some people depending upon the darajah. If you have been someone who have wronged yourself, you will encounter the azab of the qabr, as we have previously mentioned in discourses that came before, that we underwent before. There are some people who will not be given time to even come out from their graves. There are some people who would not want to come out of their graves in fear of torture and punishment. These people, it is mentioned in the sunnah, that these people, the angels will dig their arms through the earth for these people and literally grab these people by the hair and pull them out from their qubur. They will be pulled out, physically pulled out from their graves. Depending upon the a'mal, your a'mal, your actions in this world. Fajr, kadir, you lied, you were transgressor, you were mufsi, you caused corruption, you caused fitna. Whatever the misdeed, whatever the bad deed may be, there is a punishment for everything in the akhir. As is recorded from the sunnah of our beloved Prophet, Sayyiduna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As soon as they come out from the earth, Allahu Akbar, what will the, what will the people say? وَقَالُوا from Surah Al-Safat وَقَالُوا يَا وَيْلَنَا هَذَا يَوْمُ الدِّينَ This is from the Qur'an, I'm quoting from the Qur'an. And they will say, Woe unto us, هَذَا يَوْمُ الدِّينَ This is the day of judgment. And then Allah will be ordered to say to them, أُحْ هَذَا يَوْمُ الْفَصْلِ This is the day of judgment. كُنْتُمْ بِهِ تُكَذِّبُونَ This is the day of judgment that you used to lie about in the dunya. You used to deny this. This also can be said to a Muslim. How, how does a Muslim deny the Qiyamah? Not fearing his Isab. Not having a single thought about standing before Allah facing account. Leading a life of a worldly life. Not giving the thought for his Akhirah. A Muslim may also be told this. هَذَا يَوْمُ الْفَصْلِ الَّذِي كُنْتُمْ بِهِ تُكَذِّبُونَ This is the day of judgment that you used to deny in the Akhirah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the angels will say, Allah will command the angels, Grab these people, 
the angel will be ordered, gather those who committed wrong. All those people who committed wrong, acts, and their kinds. And who they used to worship. Others, others than Allah. Show them a path to the fires of Jahannam. Look at this. Imagine that. Imagine that you've been in your grave for how long? Allahu wa Rasuluhu a'lam. You've been through, you've been through hell in your grave. Oh, up and down. Life's been up and down in your grave and all of a sudden you've been dragged out and you've been carried. You've been pushed like, like a cow. You're in, you're in a herd. Like cattle, driven to the plains of the day of judgment. You are being humiliated. You are being disgraced. This is not just physical torture. This is psychological torture to the extreme degree. So the ulama have mentioned, Sayyiduna al-Imam al-Qurtubi have mentioned, that the psychological torture on that day will be more than the physical torture. Imagine you being driven to Jahannam. Imagine you seeing your loved ones who never used to perform their duties in this dunya. Mistreated people, whatever their sin may have been. You see them shackled up. You see the angels beating them and whipping their naked, barefooted bodies. This is psychological torture. Psychological torture. Having chains of fire around yourselves. Even the least of punishment in the fires of Jahannam is that a person will be made to wear sandals of fire. Sandals of fire that will cause that person who is undergoing this azab, it will cause that person's brain to boil. This is the least azab. Not only is it an excruciating azab, a severe torment, but it is also a torment of a, psycholog a psychological nature. Allahu Akbar Kabira. We need to think of this. So Allah will say, Min dunillahi suratil jaheem. Show them towards the path of hellfire. Allah will say to the angels, Waqifuhum. Stop them. Indeed. Innahum mas'udun. Stop them. They are going to be questioned. And they're just standing there. Standing there looking. Fearful. Drenched with their sweat up to their earlobes as recorded in Bukhari and Muslim Sharif. Their sweat will reach their earlobes. The angels will ask them, Malakum. Malakum. What is with you people? Lata Nasarun. You're not helping one another now? In the dunya you used to help one another in doing bad actions. You used to help one another in hurting other people, etc, etc. Balhumu al-yawma mustaslimun. They cannot help themselves. But today, they are in a state of total surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they will approach one another. They will approach one another. Blaming one. Blaming one another. Allahu Akbar Kabir. Allahu Akbar Kabir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also states in Surah Al-Furqan. <coughs> these, these ayahs that I'm going to recite for you is enough, sufficient, enough for you to choose good company. Always be around good company. Do not hang around people who do not pray their salah. Don't start acting like Superman and thinking, no, I've just started praying. I'm going to hang around with those druggies and those alkies and I'm going to bring them to the masjid. No, don't think you're Superman. Get yourself sorted first. If you see that you can pray your salah and it's become a love for you, carry on, carry on, make dua for them. Dua is enough from your side, then when you see, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you strength and tawfiq, then you can start making da'wah. But choosing the right company is pinnacle in Islam. Choosing the right company is very important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Al-mulku yawma idhin al-haqqu lil-rahman True sovereignty that day is for Allah, the most merciful. Wa kana yawman ala al-kafirina asira but that day upon the disbelievers, the day of judgment for the disbelievers is extremely difficult. And on the day when the person who wronged himself in the dunya, he will have his hand in his mouth, biting, biting his hands, biting his fingers. This is an act of regret. This is an act of regret. 
Ya laytani takhadtu ma'ar rasul sabila The oppressor, the wrongdoer, he will bite his fingers and he will say Oh I wish I had taken away with the messenger Why didn't I adopt the sunnah in my life? Yawmut taghabun There are over hundreds and hundreds of names of the day of judgment The ulama have named Qiyamah One of the names of Qiyamah is Yawmut taghabun The day of regret because this is the biggest on that day a person will feel the most regret on, on that day Allahu Akbar may Allah save us and he will say Ya waylaka laytani lam attakhid fulanan khalila here we go Allah will say uh, you will say that person woe unto me I wish I had not taken that one as a friend because those friends those bad companies people who have people who are bad and you spend time with them they will only bring you down to their level. They wish nothing good for you. They only wish that you accompany them in their vices. Hmm? So be very, very careful. We, you, perhaps, God forbid, we may be among those who will say, Ya laytani lam attakhid fulanan khalila. Woe unto me. Why did I take him as a friend? Laqad adwallani an dhikr He led me away from the remembrance. Ba'da idba'ani. After it had come to me. And then blame will be given upon shaitan. Look what he will say. وَكَانَ الشَّيْطَانِ الْإِنْسَانِ خَبُولًا And as ever, shaitan is to man a deserter. Hmm? Allahu Akbar Tabi. Allahu Akbar Tabi. So, let's consider, inshaAllah, for the next five minutes. Let's consider the resurrection. Imagine people being driven towards the plains of judgment. People will be naked. People will be without clothes. People will be barefooted to the land of mustering. It's called the land of mustering. The land of mustering in accordance with Sunnah. I will say, say a few hadith, insha'Allah bi the, the, the land itself of mustering is, is a white plain. It's plain white. It's soft white. The plain of mustering. Hmm? In which on that pl plain white, um, soft white land, at land which is open and spacious there will be no hills there will be no hills so that people can hide behind those hills there will be no hills in front of you and there will be no hills behind you there will be no curving or there will be no crookedness and there will be no lo um, lowly, uh, lowliness lowliness yeah lowness like you know any deep any deep ditch or any crookedness whatsoever so that people can hide or disappear into. On the contrary, my dear brothers in Islam, it is a very flat, plain land to which people will be driven in crowds. Everyone will see. In the tafsir of Ibn Abbas, from the ayah, on that day, the earth will be changed into a different earth. Do you remember the, 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 the time lapse between the first law and the second law? How many years? 40 years. 40 years. During these 40 years, Allahu A'lam, during these 40 years, the earth, this is mentioned in Surah Ibrahim, the earth will be changed into a different earth. And even the skies as we know it will be a different sky. And they will be marshaled forwards to who? Al-Wahid. The one, the unique, al qahar the irresistible. Hmm? So, Ibn Abbas, he does tafsir of this. <coughs> Ibn Abbas, he said, regarding this ayah, the tafsir of this ayah, Sayyiduna Ibn Abbas, the cousin of the Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad wasalam, said that it would surely change in size. It will change in size, it will change in shape. There will be no trees, there will be no mountains, there will be no valleys, no rivers as we know earth as it is today. Complete alteration. Different. The earth will be extended. And the earth will be made spacious. A white soft land, this is how he describes it beautifully. A white soft land like a silver plate reflecting the nur of the moon. Just imagine, like a big, massive, open, spacious land. Stretching as far as the eye can see. 
because it needs to hold all the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just imagine that day. Just imagine. This is good that we come here on Fridays to remind ourselves. And if you can remember in Jummah, inna fi dhalika la dhikra. Indeed, in the Quran, there is a reminder. Liman kana lahu qalb. The one who has a heart. O al qassama. O the one who throws his ear. The one who listens. Wa huwa shaheed. And he is a witness. So it's good that we come here and listen with an open heart. So that it brings about change in our life. So that we think about this day. Allahu Akbar. Even when the adhan is given. You know, the adhan should be a reminder of the day of Qiyamah. That Allah is calling us for our judgment. In your salah, it is Allah is judging you in your salah. He is looking at you every single posture that you are, you are, you are giving to him. Your walk, your sujood. It's in complete examination. It is our form of judgment. We are being judged five times a day by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the lesser qiyamah, as the ulama and the sufiya have mentioned. Ibn Abbas, he says, on this silver plate, like a silver plate. He similarizes this plain white surface as a silver plate reflecting the, moon, the moon's nur. Upon which blood has never been shed upon this place before. It is bath, it is clean. And no one has disobeyed Allah on this surface ever, ever before. So this surface not only has blood not been shed upon it, but also this, this plain, this resurrection, the, the plains of the Day of Judgment, where we will be standing one day, it will be free from any mistake. No mistake has ever been committed upon it. And as for the sky, <coughs> Hazrat Ibn Abbas, Ibn Abbas, he says, as for the sky, its sun, the moon, stars, and all the celestial bodies will completely disappear. There will be absolutely nothing. You read in the Quran, read my brothers, إِذَا الشَّمْسُ كُوِّرَتْ سُورَةُ التَّكْوِيرِ وَإِذَا النُّجُومٌ كَدَرَتْ وَإِذَا الْجِبَالُ سُجِّرَتْ وَإِذَا الْعِشَارُ عُطِّلَتْ وَإِذَا الْوَحُوشُ حُشِرَتْ All the signs of the day of Qiyamah are after the first blow is there. Read it at home, Surah Al-Takweer. Read at home. Allah. Now, before we finish, try and consider the terror, the sheer terror of that day. Imagine you standing there, standing on that white surface, naked, barefooted. <laughs> Every single creation from the time of Adam is standing there on one plain white land. And you're looking towards the sky, which is not like the sky as you knew it when you were once alive. You look up towards the, towards the sky and you see the stars exploding in front of you. The stars are scattering above your head. When the stars lose its shine, the stars begin to scatter. You see in front of your own eyes that the sun is starting to disappear, leading every single one of us into an abyss of total bulumad, total darkness, in which on that day it is mentioned in the hadith that a man would place his hand before his face, he would not see his hand. This is the darkness that will befall people, some people, some people on the day of Qiyamah. It is also said, and just imagine you standing there, and we will witness this without shak, without a, without a, a, an atom's amount of doubt in our heart. That the sky will be rent asunder. Do you know what asunder means? Asunder means torn into pieces. The entire sky will be torn into species and, and pieces. You must bear in mind, do you know how thick the sky is? It is mentioned in the Sunnah that that sky as we know it, the, the thickness of that sky is a distance of 500 years journey. 500 years journey, the thickness of the sky. Allahu Akbar Kabira. The strength of that sky. Just imagine that sky being rent asunder. And you see sturdy strong angels on the edges and on the sides of the sky being deployed by Allah to rip it apart. This will inevitably pass before our eyes. Have you ever imagined how awful? Have you ever imagined how terrible, how shocking that sound will be in your ears when that sky is being torn apart? Allahu Akbar Kabira. You will see the sky crumble before your very eyes. 
and you will see the sky fall down like tiny pieces of melted silver. These are, these are all the things of the day of Qiyamah that the day of Qiyamah will throw at us. The sky, as Allah says in the Quran, the sky will be like melted brass. يَوْمَ تَكُونُ النَّاسُ كَالْفَرَاشِ On that day, people will be scattered about like moths. Nothing. People are frivolous. They have no value. Why does Allah use a moth? What value does a moth have? How clumsy are moths? Why does Allah use Kalfarash al Matus? Why does Allah use the insect moth? Because the moth is a most clumsy insect. It doesn't see you. It will hit your head. And it's something which is frivolous, something without significance. People will become like scattered moths. Wal jibalu fatakunu al jibalu kalihnil manfush. Ihnil manfush. You know when you when you pick up wool and you throw it around like carded wool, the mountains will become like this, and people will be naked, and every man from the time of Nabi Adam will be uncircumcised. Everyone will be raised up uncircumcised, as proven from Bukhari and Muslim Sharif. <coughs> How great is that day upon which people will be raised naked and barefooted, but even none of them will look at one another. It's mentioned in a hadith here. That the Prophet Muhammad said that the people will be raised huffatan, barefooted, urratan, naked, gharlan, uncircumcised. And everyone, everyone will be in their sweat up to their earlobes. They will be drenched into their own sweat up to their earlobes. Soda, Soda radiallahu ta'ala anha, one of the wives of the Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa she said, Ya Rasulullah, you said naked? Will, we, will the people look at each other's nakedness on that day? Right question. Will they be looking at each and other people's nakedness? Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the situation for these people will be too hard upon them. The situation will be too hard upon a single man and female. كَمَا قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى فَصَدَقَ اللَّهُ حِينَ قَالَ Allah says the truth when Allah says in the Quran, بِكُلِّ مْرِئِمْ مِنْهُمْ يَوْمَ إِذٍ شَأْنٌ يُغْنِي on that day, every one of them, every one of them has an anxiety too much to bear. Everyone will have anxieties upon anxieties. Too much to bear. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, they will be too much, they will worry too much and they'll be too fearful for themselves to even look at someone else's nakedness on the day of the Yama. Before we finish, did you not know that there will be there will be three types of people? Thalatha asnaf. Thalatha asnaf. Thalatha to asnaf. There will be three divisions of people. Three types of people on the day of Qiyam. Rukbana wa mashatan wa masha wa ala wujuhihim. Three types of people. The, the first type of people are those who will ride to the day of judgment. They will ride upon horses. They will ride upon donkeys, upon camels, whatever there is at their, at their, at their, at their, at their graves. This is a daraja. There is another hadith in Bayhaqi Sharif that there are among the ummah an elite group of people that they will be on top of giant green birds. And these green birds will pass over the plains of the day of judgment. The malaika when they are flying over the Mizan and the Isab, the Malaika, the garden angels will say, Oh, stop! Do not pass over us. Who gave you authority to come this way? Then Allah will speak and He will say, Hum awliya'i. They are my friends, upon whom there is no accountability for them today. And they will enter Jannah bi ghayri hisab. This is the way that people will go into Jannah without having their account settled on the day of Qiyam. This is the ultimate victory. This is the victory. Inshallah, may Allah bless us with this, inshallah. The first type of people, they will be riding towards the, the, white, the, the white plains of judgment. The second type of people will be walking. The third type of people will be walking prone on their faces. Sayyidina Muhammad, these are not my words, I'm quoting from the Sunnah. The companion said, One man from among the company of the Prophet Muhammad, one man said, Ya Rasulullah, 
how is it possible for them to walk upon their faces? Listen to the words of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, الَّذِي أَمْشَاهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَقْدَامِهِمْ The one who made them walk upon their feet, قَادِرٌ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَمْشِيَهُمْ عَلَىٰ وُجُوهِهِمْ He has the power to make them walk upon their faces. He has the power to make them walk upon their faces. But you know, we read all this, all this hadith, 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 hadith. But what happens to men? Even some Muslims, it's difficult for us to swallow all this information. And to actually place a great yaqeen. We're summarizing it now, we're finished. To place certainty and have iman in this. But the, the nature of men is to deny. For example, I'll give you an example. Would a man have been able to imagine that there existed beings that walked upon no feet if he didn't know about it? If you came up to a man and you said there exists a certain creation that walks without feet and he doesn't know anything about snakes or the animal kingdom, would he have believed you? He wouldn't have believed you because he only knows walking upon two feet. He doesn't even know walking upon four if you were to show him there and then, only when he would see with his eyes, he would say, Alan, I believe. Now I believe. But if it's not there in front of his eyes, he wouldn't believe. So the thing is, let men beware of denying. We shouldn't deny any of the wonders of the day of Qiyam. Any of the wonders of the day of Qiyam. Because of its indifference and unfamiliarity in comparison to dunya. Yeah? Indeed, we finish it now. Imam Ghazali says something beautiful in Ihya. He says something beautiful in Ihya al A very good argument for, for the people who deny the existence of God. They ridicule um, the events of the day of Qiyamah. This is something for you to challenge someone. Hmm? He says, فَإِنَّكَ لَوْ لَمْ تَكُنْ شَاحَكَ عَجَائِبَ الدُّنْيَا I'm going to translate it. فَإِنْ لَمْ تَكُنْ شَاهَدْتَ عَجَائِبَ الدُّنْيَا ثُمَّ عَرَضَتْ عَلَيْكَ قَبْلَ الْمُشَاهَدَةِ قَبْلَ الْمُشَاهَدَةِ مُشَاهَدَةِ لَكُنْتَ أَشَدَّ إِنْكَارًا لَهَا Imam Ghazali says Had you never ever seen Had you Understand the English Had you never ever seen the wonders of this world Never seen the wonders of the world. What wonders are there? Tell me a wonder of the world. Someone give me an example. A wonder of the dunya? The great wall of China? The mountains. The mountains? Okay. That's a wonder of the world. The jibal. Huh? Sorry? I can't hear you. In Egypt. In Egypt? All the, all, all the pyramids, the pyramids, the pyramids of Egypt, which is a wonder of the world. Anything else? The sun rising, the sunset. Imagine someone he didn't know nothing about the dunya, nothing about the dunya, and you've never seen the wonders of this world. And all of a sudden, thumma aradat alika, these wonders all of a sudden were offered to you before you even saw them. Before you even saw them, these wonders were offered to you. You haven't seen them yet. But at that time, the wonders were offered to you. You would have surely even at that time denied any single wonder of this world before you saw them. So why deny anything about the day of Qiyam? Why deny anything about the, the wonders of the day of Qiyam? The wonders of the Qabr, the wonders of the plains of judgment, the wonders of Jannah. Hmm? Men deny it because they've never, they, they have no knowledge of it, they've never seen it before. It's the same goes for the dunya here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to act upon what has been said. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala install in our hearts fear and true love for him. We'll end it with the